This conflict started August 2nd when the dictator of Iraq invaded a small and helpless neighbor. Five months ago, Saddam Hussein started this cruel war against Kuwait. Tonight, the battle has been joined. This is me, actually. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I can actually remember that picture being taken of me. I had such a round head, they called me pea head. <laughs> I never thought about dying. I never thought about my life ending because I've been sent to war. I wasn't afraid to die, oddly enough, but I didn't want my life to be altered. When I returned home, I was an alien. How do you describe being on Mars? Fast forward, I was having trouble in my relationships. I pushed away most of my friends. Ended up uh, asking my husband for a divorce. I was at the bottom of a well, and someone had pulled the ropes out. Like, I knew that if I tried to climb up, I'd fall back down. I finally got to a point where I'm like, I just can't feel like this anymore. Inside, it was like, I think something happened to me over there. So I was being treated by my psychiatrist and she just said, you know, I really think you should start looking for a service dog. He waited. That's good boy. You're right on schedule. This is my service dog, Orbit, and he's a golden retriever, laboratory retriever mix. And he's been my service dog for three and a half years. Oh, thank you. Really? That's good. <laughs> he's, he's like, none of your cues are making sense, so I'll just keep doing this. Are you comfy? <laughs> are you cool? He is? Cool. <laughs> He gave me my life back. Oh, but can you sit down? Can you sit? Can you sit down? Oh, thank you. So you might notice Orbit tends to put his weight against me and face outwardly and kind of survey. A lot of people with PTSD will constantly be surveying and looking around and but it's, it's actually very comforting for me to know that he's kind of got my back, you know? And uh, <laughs> he's, either, he's either surveying or wanting a paw massage. <laughs> so I guess he's a uh, multi-purpose. <laughs> you want that one massage too? Give me a kiss. I didn't even know about this park before I, I got Orbit. I just love being in nature, and I think he does too, so. 
Yeah, it's, I think it's good for both of our mental health. Can you stand? I think, can you squish me again? Give me a squish. I know, give me a squish. Go, go stretch first. It's okay. Give me a squish. Thank you, baby. You're the best puppy. Actually, it took me a few months to be comfortable even with cueing him to help me. I kind of thought, you know, maybe he doesn't want to. I guess that's part of the whole process and healing aspect of having a service dog is you realize it's okay to ask for help. It doesn't mean anything's wrong with you just because you need a little help. Just because you get a service dog doesn't mean everything's fixed. You know, from the outside in, it's, um, I just look like an average person going to get groceries. <laughs> but internally, you know, I'm just kind of falling apart. When there's a lot of movement and commotion, my brain gets very tired. It just comes on, and I can't predict it sometimes. All right, let's go. Oh. Yeah, I guess I just feel frustrated and because I know this is not going to go away anytime soon. Maybe it will, but it's been a long time. At one point, the whole right side of my body went numb and it was very strange. And all of a sudden, I'm just at home and having a hard time walking. They did an MRI and then they did a spinal tap. And my MRI was Swiss cheese, basically, and it was a very classic damaged brain. And I did not long after get a letter from the US military that said, oops, <laughs> we're sorry, but it looks like you were exposed to sarin nerve gas while you were deployed. You just feel like you have this, like there's something in your bones that you're never gonna be able to get rid of. And so today we just wanted to honor you who are veterans with our flag raising. So I'm gonna ask all of my vets that are present to come on up. I'm gonna hand the flag over to you and I would like you to raise it. So if I could have my veterans come on up. My wife has my hanging in the closet with all my you know, memorabilia. And I took it out and looked at it and I said, no. But you see, everything fits. You did good. I think people like you. Did you make some frogs? Can I hold you back? Thank you. I'm actually still a little bit overwhelmed.
I usually just hide <laughs> on Veterans Day because it's kind of heavy. <laughs> the whole spirit of being in the service, we take care of each other. And I feel like sometimes these days it's getting lost. You know that people don't really watch out for each other anymore. But I'm glad I came. I'm glad I came because it was great to be with people who understand you. And I'm realizing that I should probably reach out more. Hi, Orbit. Come here, Orbit. How are you doing? You want to stand on my foot? Yes. How are you? Doesn't it suck? It does. It sucks. But some days are good. That's right. So. That's right. That's, that's right. No, don't be though. My little sweet Lorelai. What do you think? I think you've reused for your service. <laughs> Thank you, Orbit. <laughs> I remember I was in the midst of my really dark time. I used art to get through a lot of the real tough stuff. So I do this. Not really a professional, <laughs> but it definitely helped. Let's see, what should we do today? When I'm making art, I feel like I don't have to be anybody for anybody. I can just be me. It's very freeing. And watercolor, especially for me, because it's so, it flows, it dries, it, it, it has its own life. I love that I don't have a lot of control. You kind of just kind of go with the flow and make it into happy accidents. I went through a long period of my life where I'm like, I just want to be back who I was before all this happened. And then finally, with the help of my therapist, she's like, I think we just need to accept what's going on. Maybe that's part of my journey, you know, just being okay with who I am and all that comes with it. I don't know what I'm doing. One of the things I learned from being in the military is that you're there for each other. And as I become more and more resilient every day with this dog, I, I definitely put him to work to give lots of love to people. He's my family now. And it doesn't, it doesn't take any, any work on his effort. That's just who he is. How do we help each other? That's the question. Maybe it just starts with me. You know, making sure I'm reaching out to my friends. Like, if we could just stop for a minute and ask someone, how's your heart? How'd you sleep last night? Do you want to pet my dog? <laughs> you know, if we could just not leave people behind, you know? How's it going? He's <laughs> like, it's like, what is this? Who is that? Is that Nick? Oh, this is a good boy. <laughs>